I want to welcome you all to our first Why Emerge conversation with our Kentucky Emerge alums and um, other women who are connected to Emerge Kentucky. So it is my honor and privilege to be here today. My name is Gretchen Hunt and I serve as the Executive Director of Emerge Kentucky. And I am just incredibly thrilled to interview today my Emerge alum sister from the class of 2014, um, the incredible Representative elect Colonel Pamela Stevenson. Um, so Colonel Stevenson, I'm just so excited to see you today. And I don't quite know first um, if I should address you as representative elect or Colonel. So we are so excited to see you um, starting out in the Kentucky legislature in January. Um, so before we begin, I do want to just um, say that there's great joy that I have today in interviewing you. Um, but I'm also aware that our city and our state and our nation are in a moment of um, deep self um, reflection and there's a lot of mourning around. So I wanted just to begin by stating again to all of our um, alumni and our supporters and the public out there um, that Emerge Kentucky is absolutely committed to principles of equity, diversity, and inclusion. And it is our mission to recruit women from diverse backgrounds to serve an elected office in Kentucky. And at no time is that more important than today. So we stand um, very ready to partner with our alum, with the community to recruit black women and other women of color to serve in office. And so um, I just wanted to open it up to you to see if you wanted to give any remarks about the current situation. Um, one of our alums who um, serves in the state house, who will be your partner serving in the state house, mm -hmm. Representative Attica Scott, has been on the front lines, um, and a lot has transpired in the last 24 hours. So I just wanted to open that up to you. Yeah, it's a hard time for us. We're exhausted, just simply exhausted. And I commend Attica Scott. I commend. Um, Shamika Parish Wright, all the people, I commend Charles Booker, the leaders that have been on the front line standing for justice, standing to make sure that all of our children can live in a world that works for everyone. And while I am immensely sad and just horrified by what the events of last night, it's good to see her, Attica Scott, Charles Booker, put their money where their mouth is, standing for justice. It's so many people in this state that are doing it. Amy McGrath is standing for justice. So we need to be able to identify what's going to move us forward. We need all hands on deck, whether the hands are red, black, blue, or green to dismantle those things which allow other people to treat us less than human. I will be in that fight. I will stay on that fight so that this world works for all people, especially so that we can stop the slaughter of Black people. You have been a leader um, in so many ways. So just to give those who are tuning in who don't know you, um, you are a 27 year veteran of the US Air Force where you served as a Colonel and serving our nation. You served in the Judge Advocate um, General Corps. And so you served as an attorney and then you came back to your hometown of Louisville where you're a proud Brown School graduate. Yeah. And you um, founded a nonprofit legal service agency to assist veterans and other people who were in need of, of legal assistance. Um, so you have done so many things prior to then um, running for the state legislature. Tell me a little bit about um, how young you were or when those first sparks of leadership really um, stirred in you. I, I imagine even little Pamela as a young girl had those stirrings, but tell us a little bit more about oh my where, God. That, where that leadership came from. My parents, they could tell you stories. I came back home after serving because I wanted to be with my family and my mom and dad, Kenneth and Dorothy Stevenson are still living in the house that I grew up. And in that house, I used to, we used to play school and I of course had to be the teacher. And then later on, when I discovered that there were no ballet schools in high school in West Louisville, I started a ballet school. It, my parents taught us 
that if you have one slice of bread, you share it. That you do whatever it is you need to do to make sure that this world works for everyone and that people in the community are protected. Our house was always on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday full of people that just wanted to be together. The kids were upstairs, the adults were downstairs, and we um, existed together as a family. And we noticed that the adults were solving problems while the children were playing, and we watched it. And we watched how they took care of each other no matter what. So I decided a long time ago that, that if I were going to do anything with this one life that God gave me, it would be to make my community better. And I'm talking about being a woman, a black woman, and, a, and to make the world work for everyone. So you had that early example of leadership and communal leadership, really, that you talk about. Um, Emerge Kentucky, as we know, is a, is a leadership training program. We train Democratic women to run for office, and we hone their skills to win. And almost more importantly, I would say, than even doing that, or equally as important, is we build a network of women. So over 250 women have gone through our program over the last 11 years. You went through the class six years ago. Tell me a little bit about why you chose to go through Emerge and, and what were the parts that you took away from it? Well, Emerge was, it's funny, I was at the state capitol um, in Frankfurt and I was with someone and I saw all these women running around the state capitol and they had Emerge badges on. And I said, what is Emerge? And she looked at me like I was an alien. Like, you don't know what Emerge is? Let's fix that. Let's get you in the next class. <laughs> and um, she told me what it was. And it was aligned with what I said I would do, which is to serve this community. So I wanted to move from serving America to serving Kentucky. And Emerge would give me the tools I needed to make sure I knew what to do uh, if when running for office. See, when I was in the military, one of the most common things that people ask, because we moved every two years, new city, new culture, they always ask, where are you from? And I would say Kentucky, because I'm a proud Kentucky girl. And they would say one of two things. Oh, they have blacks in Kentucky? Or they would say, you don't look like a hillbilly. And I started to see that this perception of Kentucky didn't match the reality because I'm living in their neighborhoods, I'm living in their states and they don't have the heart, the people or the answers and they wanna talk about my state. So I said when I was traveling for the Air Force serving America that when I got back home, I'm going to work to build the perspective of Kentucky for the world to see. Now it's important because I'll give one example and let you ask another question. It's important because if we're going to have families thrive, there has to be some economic viability in the states. We're losing coal, we, we lost uh, um, the cigarettes. There's so much that we depend on that we've lost. So we have to find new sources of revenue. Now here's the thing, when corporations decide they're going to open up another branch or move corporate headquarters. They discuss it before it becomes public. And we never know they're discussing it. And we don't want when they say, should we move to Kentucky, for the thought that there are only hillbillies uh, living in Kentucky to come up. We want them to think of us as, as a thriving metropolis with fabulous rural areas that can get the job done and get on those lists to bring revenue into this state. And absolutely. And I can see how passionate you are about service. And um, tell us a little bit about the women that you met in your merge class, because, um, you know, you mentioned hillbillies and urban areas. Well, we have both in our merge classes, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, and I say that with, with a term that, um, of affection, of it's folks. term of affection have reclaimed that term. Um, but we do, we have women from Pikeville to Paducah. We have women from really diverse backgrounds. Um, we try in each class to at least have a quarter of the class be women of color um, because we believe that representation matters in our state and that to move the state forward, we need 
diverse women at the table. So talk to me about um, any of your, your sisters from the class or any of the women that you, that you have learned from and how those relationships have continued outside of that six month training program. Well, the Emerge class, we have, we bonded and I am still in contact with many of the women in the class. And I absolutely love all the women from all different parts of this great state. So you can't have urban Kentucky without rural Kentucky. You can't have rural Kentucky without urban Kentucky. And the point is, we're citizens of this commonwealth. And that we should have a false dichotomy that somehow, because you're from the rural area, you don't understand the city and vice versa, is not good for Kentucky. So I was happy, happy, happy to get to know um, my sisters from the different parts of the states and, and listen to what they're facing because their experience is different than mine. And for me to have the opportunity to understand what it is they go through, that that they don't, some places don't have running water, that the internet is not good in some places is amazing to me. Like we are in the 21st century and we can't get water to all parts of Kentucky. I say it's because we haven't put our mind on it, that we haven't focused on what's good for the families of Kentucky and don't stop until they have it. Well, you will do that in the legislature. So I want to take a step back and say that in 2018, you ran your first race for the Kentucky House. It was a very tight primary, very close. Um, I know that was hard. Um, you uh, you lost to Representative Charles Booker, who then- Who's ran a great for man. Absolutely. Um, and so that was a tight race. Um, tell us about that race a little bit or, or how you- how you decided more importantly after losing that race to to try again in 2020 well we um that it was a heart loss the one thing that that we came within 377 votes but and the reason why it's hard is not only because i don't like to lose but because we had so much we wanted to do and we continue to do those things even with the loss and I actually thought, you know what, I'll find another way to serve Kentucky because my heart is serving Kentucky. And I had not thought that I would run again. And I got a call from a number of people, including uh, Representative Booker. And we had a nice long conversation where he said he would support me if I ran. And, he, and it was wonderful. So I, I'm a praying woman. I prayed about it. And I decided that I would throw my hat into the ring again. And this time, make sure that no matter what, we put the issues out there clearly and precisely so that even if I lost, someone else could pick them up. And you did that with such force. You were a hard worker, you fundraised, you applied all the skills that you learned and you just, um, you, you know, you move forward with the force that you are. I remember um, being in your, in your Emerge class and um, one of the first days when we gave speeches and it was just the room energy changed when you spoke because of your gravitas and your sense of conviction um, that's so strong that I think will serve you so well in the legislature. And we're so excited to see you serve in that role. You're unopposed in the general. So you mm -hmm. won your primary in 2020 and you're unopposed. So you will be uh, sworn in in January. Um, talk to us a little bit more about, you know, you have led in so many roles as a Colonel, um, as the head of a nonprofit legal services, um, as a mother of two, right. Um, as now representative elect for other black women and other women in particular, but I'm thinking of black women right now who um, Emerge has gotten a lot of calls and emails and, and um, info, you know, uh, communication is just about people's interest to, to run. I think right now is, is, a, is much similar to 2016 when many women felt called to run, that we're seeing a lot of interest. What would you tell people who are considering, is this, is this the right thing for me to run for office? Um, what, what advice would you give to people who are thinking of stepping into that realm? First of all, I would say, join Emerge, get the training, get the training. Second of all, 
be unstoppable. If you have the question of whether or not I should run, you should run. People that don't have that sensibility don't have that question. And the, the, the opportunity for you to be fully expressed and for you to pass a torch to the next generation is inside of you doing the work that matters to you. So I am a, I do, I've done Emerge and I also um, work in other programs around the community where we talk about running for office. I don't want you to talk about it. I want you to do it. What I want you to do is say, I'm the one. It's going to take all of us. So let me get ready to do the thing that I need to do. Now, of course, have a circle of people that you trust. So for example, when I lost in 2018, one of the people that sat with me and um, made sure I was okay and, and not too sad was an Emerge sister. That's the importance of making sure that you have people that you trust. If they say go left, you go left. If they say go right, you go right. And you, know, you don't doubt their motives in regards to you. But this can be done. This can be done. See, I'm clear that we are the generation that can end homelessness and make sure that no child goes to bed hungry. If we can put a man on the moon, if we focus, we can end those two things. But it's gonna take you. Everybody's got something they can do. Some people can protest, some people can write legislation, some people can pass out water at protests. Everything counts. But this is the first time that the whole world has been in one conversation. And now it's time for us to bring forth those things which matter to us in terms of social justice, families, all the things that we stand for. Now is the time and we need you. We need every black woman who thinks she's either gonna be a campaign manager, she's going to be in the uh, uh, social media, whatever it is that you do, whether you're the candidate or not, at the very least, Vote, vote, and then look around and see, what else can I do? How, what do I want my legacy, legacy to be? When they celebrate my 90th birthday, what will they say is my contribution to this community? I'll say one more thing and let you ask me another question, Gretchen. One of the most moving things is two things. First, when Ruth Bader Ginsburg died and had her service, that over 100 of her clerks stood outside the Capitol. They stood for what she stood for. They stood for the lessons she taught them. They stood for the impact she had on this world. And the question you have to ask yourself, Will people stand for me? Will they stand because I've contributed something? I'm not saying everybody has to change the world or it's in hunger, but everybody has something to do. And then second, John Lewis, when he knew it was his dying days, he says, I'm gonna write a love letter to the world. And I'm gonna ask my good friend to read it for me. And if you listen to that love letter, he talks about following your heart so that humanity will be better because you lived. He says, my cause was, was civil rights, but you find your path and you follow it so that humanity can, can be better. Do that. It's not enough to complain, talk about, gossip about. Do something. You have certainly done something and you're just beginning. Um, so I, I wanna turn a little bit now to, you know, January, you'll be sworn in. 
you will join some of your other emerged sisters in the legislature. That number keeps growing. You know, uh, when I ran for office in 2014, I think we were 43rd in the nation in the number of female legislators, um, but now we're 39th. And perhaps even more notable, you will be the second black woman to serve in the legislature alongside Representative Scott, um, which is a number that's far too low, right? Yeah. Um, not at all representative of our great commonwealth. Um, talk to me about some of your ideas or plans or hopes or dreams for um, serving in office because, you know, we've trained you and prepped you to run for office. That's what Emerge does. But that, that next stage of the journey, um, that looks different, right? So talk mm -hmm. to me about that and, and who may be some of your guides or, or people that you'll that you'll reach out to for that support. Well, um, Representative Charles Booker had said that he would help me transition, and um, and plus the other uh, legislators have all been so gracious in reaching out and including me and helping me get my feet wet, get my sea legs, as the Navy like to, likes to say. And for me, there are three areas that I really want to work on. And one is unity. In my community, leadership, growing more leaders. Growing leaders. Leadership is the difference as we can tell by how the country is being run. We need strong leaders so that we can be the difference that we want in the world. So I want to make sure that the chisms that have developed, and some of them might be accurate, but the, the, um, the rumors, if you will, that says that rural Kentucky doesn't like Louisville, Jefferson County doesn't like this county, all those things that actually stop us from making progress. I want to agree on what we can agree upon, period, and work on that. And I can talk to almost anybody unless your talk is designed to destroy me, then I won't participate. But I want unity. I think it's so critical that we're all rowing in the same direction to get Kentucky off the bottom of those lists and to make sure that our children have the education they deserve, to make sure that we have health care, and to make sure that, people, that jobs are available, tech jobs, other jobs that each child gets to follow their heart's desire. So we have to think differently and we have to think creatively and we have to do that together. I like to see all people that live in Kentucky see themselves as part of the system. And of course, I wanna dig out social injustice. It's sort of like breathing. It's a part of our systems and we don't know it. It's just the way we live. For example, in our criminal justice system, that's one of my pet pet projects, that our prison systems, first of all, don't need to be for-profit. And second of all, they really do need to be rehabilitative and not just holding cells. And finally, when we release those people from prison, that they have a pathway to prosper in the community, just like when we release uh, our child ages out of the foster care system, that we allow them to age out into a life that's been built for them and not just age out and not know what to do. So there's a lot of work to be done and my focus is gonna be on unity, families thriving and making sure that children have what they need to run this state. Well, we will be so excited to watch you serve and we'll be um, just really eager to see that leadership and the way that you lift up others in your community, other women. Um, I do want to just share with the group, um, you've alluded to our training program. We are uh, open right now for applications for the class of 2021. And those applications are online at www.emergeky.org. And the application is there. Um, those applications need to be received by November 7th. Interviews will be in mid-November and then the class will start in January. The class goes from January to June and it is one Saturday each month. It's a total of 70 hours. Um, we will be following CDC guidelines, whether that's part virtual or part in person. And um, 
we just want to let folks know about that application. You can also recommend a woman to apply for the Merge Kentucky class. So um, it's worth noting, I've heard you say several times that, that several people, you know, put that bug in your ear or urged you to do that. And that is just so important because most people are hesitant a little bit and think, gosh, is that, is that for me, right? Is it, mm -hmm. is it me? Maybe some imposter syndrome. There may be cultural um, implicit bias that we all have that's gender bias, racial bias that prevents us from stepping into power. Um, so that nominating someone, saying that you see that spark in them can be the change to make them take that step and apply. So we just wanna encourage all our viewers to um, nominate someone for the Emerge Kentucky class or to follow us. Um, Representative-elect Pamela Stevenson, you are um, just such a leader, and we're so grateful for your leadership right now in the city, yeah. in our state. Um, any final thoughts that you want to share with I do with just have audience? two thoughts if I could share with them. Thank you. One, I am now talking to my Black sisters. Everybody can listen. You ask, you wonder if you can do it or not, and I say you can you want to know how I know? Because you're already doing it. You're taking care of everybody, all the organizations, the, ch the churches. You have a lot on your plate. Now put something on your plate for you. Sec secondly, if you don't want to be at the bottom of the empty barrel, then we must act together. Finally, for all women, well, that was for all women too. You guys, now is the time. You have it inside of you to do the things you dream of. And we've got a great group over here waiting to welcome you and make sure that you shine and that you win. Join us, ask us questions, reach out to me, reach out to the Emerge. We just want you to fulfill your potential in a way that Kentucky also wins. Thank you. I could not end this better. We want to thank you again, Representative-elect Colonel Pamela Stevenson, and thank you to everyone has tuned, who's tuned in today. And please follow us on Emerge Kentucky. Thank you so much.